Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. This is the Tuesday Cafe, and I'm Sean Canan. Today, we're going to look at plans by the city of Tampa to reuse treated wastewater. One plan is to pump the water into the aquifer and then pump it into a drinking water reservoir on the Hillsborough River. But critics say the city is not providing enough information on things like safety and cost. Tampa City Council will vote again on funding for this project on Thursday. Currently, 50 million gallons of treated wastewater is pumped into Tampa Bay, but the city wants to recycle that water instead. In February, Tampa City Council voted six to one to spend more than a million dollars to continue to explore options for that water. The vote came after several council members said they were torn about how to proceed. Council member Bill Carlson voted no in that vote. Tampa Mayor Jane Castor wants the city to study how to divert the 50 million gallons a day to replenish Sulphur Springs and the Hillsborough River and to make the city more resistant to drought. And some of that treated wastewater could end up in the aquifer or in the drinking water supply. So my guests this morning are people who oppose Tampa's idea. It's branded Pure, Purify Natural Resources for the Environment. So joining us by Zoom are Gary Gibbons, Vice Chair of the Tampa Bay Sierra Club. Hi, Gary. Good morning, Sean. How are you? I'm doing great. And also, we're joined with Phil Compton, who is a founding member of Friends of the Hillsborough River. Hi, Phil. Good morning, Sean. And help me with this, CC. Is it what? How it's do you pronounce Carol Camisa. It? It's just a different spelling. Thank you, Carol. I, I'm, I apologize for that, but welcome in. And thanks to all three of you for joining us. So let's set the scene before we delve into what the city might be planning. First of all, who can tell us what's happening now with Tampa's 50 million gallons of treated wastewater every day? Where does it end up and how is it treated? Well, it goes into, yeah, it goes into uh, Tampa Bay through Seddon Channel and the contaminants that are in that water are then diffused, uh, dispersed uh, in that huge body of water. And one concern we have about alternative plans is that you would be doing something radically different. You would have a much higher concentration if you put any of that water into the aquifer, in the Seminole Heights area, into the lower river where fish come up river to spawn, and or into the reservoir where we get our drinking water from on the other side of the dam. And that's the voice of Phil Compton, who is a founding member of Friends of the Hillsborough River. What can you tell us about the way that water is treated? I mean, it comes to the city through the wastewater um, pipes, and then the, tr the city treats it to what level and what happens to it? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things- It's treated, Sean, yes, treated at the, go ahead, go ahead, Gary, sorry. Yeah, one of the things that uh, I think everybody needs to understand is that there's only one sewage collection system and that everything, all your homes, all of the hospitals, dry cleaners, battery manufacturers in East Tampa, all of them discharge their waste into the same system. And then that is treated um, and, and then released into the bay. And what the city is proposing to do is to then, that, well, one of the problems that we have with what they've said so far is they won't tell us what they're going to do to treat it further before putting it into the river or into the aquifer or into the reservoir above the dam, which is where they pull our drinking water from now. Yeah, the Howard F. Kern treatment plant is what's called an advanced wastewater treatment facility. When it went online in the early 70s, it was a huge step forward for Tampa Bay because it uh, things were a lot worse before then. And it really does remove a lot of the contaminants that are in this water. But since that time, over the last, well, 50 years, there have been a lot of new chemicals that have come into play, a lot of new pharmaceuticals. I mean, every time you turn on TV, there's a new ad for a new wonderful drug that maybe someone needs to take, but we don't all need to take that, right? And then there's the PFAS, the forever chemicals, which we're just now recognizing are grave threat to public health and the problem with all those is that today there are no standards. There are no safety standards for how much of any of those hundreds of chemicals we have. The city has never dealt with these contaminants prior to this time in terms of getting them down to where we need to have safe water. The city sends out a report. I just got another copy yesterday with my, uh, my water bill 
uh, asking us to get a look at their 2021 water quality report, uh, which is assures us that the water is safe and it is safe, but it asks us to show, look at how they are complying with federal and state drinking water standards, including the Safe Drinking Water Act. And they do, and that's great. But there are no standards for these new set of contaminants, the hundreds of contaminants that are in the treated wastewater that goes into the bay. Now, nobody drinks the water when it goes into the bay. And it's, like I said, it's, it is greatly diluted going into the bay, but putting it into our drinking water when there's any level of those contaminants remaining uh, is, brings unknown risk. And we say that would be uh, an unwise thing to do. I want to remind people that our guests are opposing Tampa's idea for PURE, Purify Natural Resources for the Environment. They're Gary Gibbons, Vice Chair of Tampa Bay Sierra Club, Carol Camisa with the Hillsborough League of Women Voters, and Phil Compton, a founding member of Friends of the Hillsborough River. And we're talking about this, this plan by Tampa that is has to be approved by Tampa City Council, or at least funding will be voted on this week for to move ahead with the PURE plan. So what are the um, what are the different ideas for what we might do with these 50 million gallons of water? The city says it hasn't decided yet what it'll do, but what are some of the options that it might be considering? Phil? Well, one thing that we do today, and we don't do enough of it, if you're over in St. Pete, where they don't have any fresh water, for 40 years, they've had a system where the water that's used to irrigate lawns is reclaimed water, okay? It's their drinking water system. And uh, we have the purple pipes system, which goes to a very limited number of households. So, but people do use that water to water their lawns, but this, it comes with a warning. <clears throat> don't drink, don't get it on you. Be very careful with that. It's only for watering your plants in the yard. So this is the, the use that the city has today for a little bit of that water that it could expand and then use up a good bit more of that water. We've also taken the position that that discharging it into the bay is has been beneficial to the bay uh, because it is an estuary and it and that fresh water that's been blocked by the dam for years um, should have naturally flowed into the bay. And um, if they want to spend money to do something, they ought to spend money to further clean that that wastewater before it's released into the bay rather than putting it into the drinking water supply. They have not shown a necessity to have additional 50 million gallons a day of water for the city of Tampa's drinking needs. And also there are um, options through regional cooperation, Tampa Bay Water, of which the city is a, is a member, uh, perhaps not happily a member. Um, in Tampa, we like to uh, view the Hillsborough River as our own, even though it comes down from places north. And uh, I fear that, that uh, many city officials and over many administrations have viewed water as a commodity to be sold. And so there's an issue of money to be made. But there's a, a strong potential here for regional solutions. And there are for instance, uh, uh, RO plant uh, and, and other you know, pipes that could be built much more uh, cheaply than, than what is proposed that could have a cooperative balanced approach. And the city seems very res resistant to considering those. Yeah, this city has really never wanted to be a member of Tampa Bay Water. This city feels like it owns the Hillsborough River. And let's face it, you know, St. Pete and Clearwater and, and all those places, they don't have rivers flowing through the middle of them like Tampa does. But we are part of a regional system. We supply with the Hillsborough River, with the Alfaya River, a lot of the water that is being stored and treated by Tampa Bay water today in this time of high flows on the rivers with the rainy season. And that water is part of the regional system. But on the other hand, they have resources. They have the well fields in Pasco County. They have the reverse osmosis machine system down in the south part of the Hillsborough County. And this is a part of the regional system. So we have a balanced approach so that we never run out of water anywhere. No one suffers in the Tampa Bay water system. And it's all planned and coordinated on a regional level. 
Tampa doesn't want to play with the others. I want to remind people that our guests are Phil Compton, who we just heard, the found, a founding member of the Friends of the Hillsborough River. Before that, we heard Carol Camisa with the Hillsborough League of Women Voters and Gary Gibbons, the vice chair of the Tampa Bay Sierra Club. They're with a coalition that is opposing Tampa's PURE plan. That stands for Purify Natural Resources for the Environment. It's really a, an idea of what to do with 50 million gallons a day of treated wastewater that right now it goes into Tampa Bay and the city wants to recycle some of that water and potentially some of that will enter the drinking water supply. So I want to know what you think as well. You can email me at dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-433-0885. And later on in the show, we'll take some phone calls, 813-239-9663, if you want to get in the queue now and, and be patient for a little bit while we continue the interview until we get to your phone calls later in the show. I want to thank you for listening to WMNF Tampa. I'm Sean Canan, and this is the Tuesday Cafe. And so I want to ask uh, our guests, um, actually, what I'll do right now is I'm going to play a, a promotional video that the city has um, has made to describe what the pure system is. So here is something that's on the city's website. They have a, a website th that um, includes information about pure, and this is one of the videos there. So take a listen and we'll talk about it right after this. Our waterways are the heart of life in Tampa. From fishing, to boating, to wildlife. Water is also a precious resource that keeps Tampa thriving. That's why we need to protect Tampa's water resources and ensure we're water resilient now and in the future. PURE is a water reuse program that will help Tampa tackle key challenges affecting water, like the need to protect our aquatic ecosystems by reducing our reliance on pumping nearby springs. It will also allow us to comply with new reclaimed water discharge laws and it will ensure Tampa has a reliable supply of clean drinking water during droughts and other natural disasters. Water is essential to our way of life. It's time we protect it and build a more sustainable future with Pure. Learn more about Pure at tampa.gov pure. So that's one of the videos that you can see if you go to tampa.gov pure and find out about what they're planning for for this project but I, I, one of the points that's i think important to to mention is that there's no real plan yet they're still in the studying phase they still they they uh you know have some ideas but at every point it seems that, that there's pushback on some of those ideas so i and i want to remind people that our guests are gary gibbons the vice chair of tampa bay sierra club carol camisa with the hillsborough league of women voters and phil compton a founding member of friends of hillsborough river and you're listening to WMNF Tampa. The Pure website says it's a sustainable water alternative for Tampa because water is too precious to use just once. And I know some of you, and I, I think that you might agree with that sentiment, but if you agree that water is too precious to use just once, why do you still oppose this plan? I don't know, Gary, is that what you were trying to answer here? Well, one of the things, Sean, that we've, we've been meeting with the city water department and the top people in the water department for 20 months. Um, monthly Zoom calls that last an hour and a half each and we peppered them with questions over and over. And one of them is, hey, do we really need this? I mean, does, does Tampa have enough water for the next 50 years without doing this? And, and the answer is, you know, they don't want to admit it, but the answer is yes, we have enough water. The, the city has enough water that they, that they're like Tico. They love to sell you water because they make a lot of money selling water. And so they are looking, they would love to be able to sell it twice, frankly, uh, by, by recycling this water. Um, or become a regional water supplier, perhaps, and sell to other people in competition with Tampa Bay Water. They haven't said that out loud, but you have to wonder if they don't need it for the growth of the city. I mean, the region is growing exponentially, okay? But the, the city limits of Tampa are finite and it's not gonna grow to, to the point where we're going to run out of water. We asked in one of our meetings, um, how much of this water is actually put on lawns? They could not tell us. They are in the process of, of uh, coming up with smart metering to be able to figure that out, 
but that is probably five to six years away before they're even going to know. But the, the driving force of this entire project is this state law, this unfunded mandate that was passed uh, in 2021 that has created the quote unquote demand for this reuse of water. Um, and it's really planning with a, a gun pointed to your head. It, it, we've asked the city on every time we've met, will you ask for an extension of the 2032 deadline? Go to the legislature, tell them the problems that we're having coming up with a solution for this. And it's as almost as if they asked for the bill to be passed. And one other point, uh, I think the mayor herself uh, uses the term drought proofing. Um, so as, as you've uh, astutely understood, Sean, you know, there is a question of resilience. There is some unpredictability to climate change and limitations of forecasting on growth. But uh, the mayor used the example of Lake Mead uh, to uh, kind of convey the, the urgency here. And we just think that there's a lot of hair on fire urgency that's not necessary, uh, especially when things haven't been studied. So the forecasts that we've seen uh, for Florida and the Tampa Bay area suggest that we will be having excess water and flooding problems. And that's where we need to focus our resiliency planning as opposed to pretending that we live in the Southwest where they haven't had rain uh, in more than a year. Uh, we, we just don't have a, a Lake Mead situation. I'm also a member of the Mayor's Advisory Council uh, for Sustainability and Resilience that Whit Raymer who spoke uh, for Pierre yesterday is a staff for. And it, it does concern me that we do have needs to make Tampa resilient to the changes coming with climate change. Uh, we need to have more pervious surfacing so that our streets don't flood when it rains because what's happening is it's raining more. We are today at this point in time, one inch shy of the average annual rainfall and we still got uh, three and a half months to go in 2022. Including um, storms. Yeah, and you're right, exactly. So we're going to be, you know, unless it doesn't rain another drop, we're going to have at least average, we're going to exceed that. And that is the trend that we've seen over this last decade with the changes from climate change kicking in. While the folks out in San Diego and Los Angeles are drying up in Phoenix, and they're losing their water, uh, we're getting more. So we need to be resilient to sea level rise, to, to flooding and all those other things. If we've got the money that this project will cost, billions, billions of dollars with a B, we should spend it on that. And so I ask if the mayor focus her attention, refocus her attention on addressing the real issues that we have and not something that someone, some people in the city have wanted to do for the last two decades because it sounds like a, a swell idea. Uh, and there's a there's a long history here uh, that my colleagues can speak to because they're more senior than me, <laughs> but they've been with us longer. Uh, you know of of this interest. Uh, you may remember, or your listeners may remember, toilet to tap. Mm -hmm. So there's been a, a long history and interest in the reuse of wastewater, and um, it, it, I, I want to just say here that. Um, the, the press coverage that we saw yesterday uh, was talked about us as in an environmental group, you know, or a bunch of tree mm -hmm. hugger kind of things. And the League of Women Voters uh, is, is, shouldn't be characterized that way, nor uh, the number of uh, neighborhood associations that are concerned or officially opposed to this project. So um, again, returning to the history, I mean, there's something that is pushing this. There's been a lack of transparency. And uh, one of the issues that they're talking about now is, well, we're, we're just studying. We haven't committed to, they've been studying this and taxpayers have been funding studies for a long time. Uh, just most recently in January, the city council voted them $1.1 million for further study and for public outreach. We have asked and never received, nor has city council, an accounting for that. And yet, 
in the coverage yesterday, Whit Reamer said, well, we just need to study more and we need to educate more people. But if you talk to the people of the city of Tampa, they don't know what pure is. And our concern is that they're trying to sell something, uh, a, a pre-baked solution to a problem that doesn't exist, as opposed to what the league would strongly support is a real dialogue so that the public can learn, so that the public can ask questions, raise objections and get answers. And that's really what we'd like to see as opposed to a nice, quick, smooth sales job. And to, to talk to the history of this, uh, way back in Pam Iorio's first term, her idea was to run a pipeline up to Pasco County. And for the newly required minimum flow, there would be a, a little T pipe running off because it would run pretty much by where the dam is at the lower river and drop off some of this water there. Um, people rose up and gave her more grief about that than anything else because we were in a position to inform the public when the city would not. Same thing happened with Bob Buckhorn. It was his top priority in the last year of his term as mayor and people said, no, we don't want to drink this water. The city has wised up. They relabeled it so it's old contaminated water in new bottles with a new label, pure instead of toilet to tap. They hate that term. And they've kept it as quiet as possible. So we come to the point now, just in the last couple of weeks, honestly, having worked with the city, tried our best, as Gary said, for 20 months to talk reason, to look at the facts and go where the facts take us. And we've decided that we have to oppose this. And just in the last couple of weeks, we have over two dozen neighborhood associations all over the city who said, oh my goodness, no. So it's not just environmentalists. I wanna remind people that you're listening to WMNF Tampa. This is the Tuesday Cafe, I'm Sean Canan. I have three guests on talking about PURE, which is Purify Natural Resources for the Environment, Tampa's idea to recycle some treated wastewater. And we just heard the voice of Phil Compton, a founding member of Friends of the Hillsborough River. Before that, we heard Carol Camisa with the Hillsborough League of Women Voters and Gary Gibbons, vice chair of Tampa Bay Sierra Club. And I have a lot of emails and texts building up. So let me <laughs> work through a few of those right now and remind people that if you'd like to weigh in on this, give us a shout at DJ at WMNF.org or text 813-433-0885. And let's see, David writes, I agree with your guests, and this is a concerning development. What happens in the case of a power outage? Could you end up with untreated wastewater dumped into the bay or being put back into the drinking water supply? Also, could your guests talk about the Jackson, Mississippi water crisis? I worry that Tampa and other big cities could face such a dire crisis eventually. Yeah, that was my, my feeling. Um exactly was I was thinking that we have more of a problem with excessive rainfall like they had in Jackson, Mississippi, and we need to be providing you know, resilience for that situation more so than trying to, to figure out uh, how to use this wastewater for additional drinking water that we don't need. In a power um, outage? Yes, as I'm a little bit familiar with Jackson, Mississippi, it does, and I, and I realize, Sean, sorry, you want to get to the question of power outage, but, but it brings up some equity issues as well, right? Uh, there are certain communities that are likely to be more impacted if they uh, decide to uh, do deep well injection in Sulphur Springs. Uh, if there are mistakes made, and people need to either buy bottled water because of a power outage or because they don't trust uh, what's coming out of the tap any longer. Higher income people, you know, can, can do that. Uh, other people cannot. So um, there are some equity issues. And then there's just, if, if this project isn't really needed and we're trying, we're being, you know, kind of sold something here, um, there's a lot of other priorities <laughs> in this city. Uh, affordable housing uh, to, to, you know, among the, the highest priority, but many others. And uh, we'd certainly like to see an exploration and discussion with the public about what our priorities are and what our needs are. Yeah, this yeah, council has been pleading with mayor to do more on affordable housing and has been told, well, we can only afford to do so much. Yet at the same time, 
she proposes a project that's going to cost billions that we believe we don't need, we may never need in this town. And we certainly won't need it for, as Gary said, the next half century. We have never heard anyone speak in favor of this project who is not either a city employee or somebody that's receiving a contractual payment from a city contract. And it, the, the public simply does not want it. Shirley writes in and asks, I'd like to know where the pure system is being used right now. So are there other places that are doing similar things? Yes, San Diego for one. Uh, but they studied it for 15 or 20 years before they actually implemented a, a test uh, project to, to try it, see if it would work. They use reverse osmosis, they use UV light, they use all sorts of treatment uh, that we have talked to the city at length about that. And every time we mention reverse osmosis, they, they say, I will let Gary's breaking up. Can anyone finish his thought? Yeah. When they, they, they say we want to look at other systems. They want to look at, and I appreciate this, uh, the cost effectiveness of other approaches that you know don't cause as much as reverse osmosis. It's the most expensive thing you can do. What you get is H2O. All the contaminants are removed totally. And San Diego, which who has to use their treated wastewater, is going to provide new expensive water, but it's going to be safe. They're not taking any chances. And since we don't have standards to test the quality, the safety of any other approach that would leave some level of hundreds of contaminants for which there are no standards, uh, we say, how can you do that in good conscience? You San know, Diego doesn't have any choice. They don't right. have any water. You know, right. we, we got more rainfall last week than they get all year. And again, we're part of a regional system, Tampa Bay Water, that the city, I believe, has never wanted to be part of and would like to declare its independence from if they possibly could. And this is the path out of Tampa Bay Water. We briefly mentioned earlier this law that the Florida uh, legislature passed and the governor signed that requires by, I think it's 2032, that, that cities and municipalities stop dumping treated wastewater into waterways like Tampa Bay. And so that's the impetus for the city um, making it kind of urgent to 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 move right now. Now let's, I'm gonna be devil's advocate. You guys said maybe that's not that important to stop that, but what about the idea of taking partially treated wastewater and dumping that nutrient laden water into Tampa Bay? There are negative consequences to that, aren't there? Absolutely. Yeah, there's a fair amount of nitrogen uh, in that water, then we suggested to the city, well, perhaps you could enhance the beneficial purpose of that water by removing nitrogen as it's leaving the Howard F. Kern treatment plant going into set and channel and leave it at that and make a case to the state DEP that since we've eliminated the con, the pros now outweigh the cons, and this is a beneficial use, and that would meet the requirements of the law. But we've also asked the city for 20 months to talk to their peers around the state of Florida who are in the same boat with them. What are you guys doing? What are you planning? How are you going to tackle this challenge here? They have no interest. It reminds me of George W. Bush, who you know, had never traveled to another country, had no curiosity. Uh, <laughs> this is the kind of thing where you really might want to know what other people are doing. And what we've heard is that no one else in Florida is planning to take their treated wastewater and put it into the supply, only Tampa wants to do that and Another we lost you for a, sorry um just for a second uh, uh phil was talking and his audio went out and his, the, his last words were to put it into the drinking water supply so yes please go ahead say only tampa is looking at doing that type of approach to this statewide challenge concerning this uh mandate from the state also uh you know we have engaged uh, let me say there's been a tremendous amount of volunteer time, expertise, and patience uh, trying to, to work with the city on, on some of these challenges. This issue of SB 64 that you mentioned, Sean, is, is only the latest justification for, for this approach. But um, we have talked with them about that, made suggestions. I mean, in general, it, 
it seems to be uh, maybe well-intentioned, but but ill-informed uh, legislative initiative that uh, kind of assumes a cookie cutter approach will work throughout the state. You know, we have different uh, size municipalities, different weather conditions, different water conditions and so on. And a member of our group has actually researched and proposed an amendment that Tampa could propose to Tallahassee relative to this uh, requirement uh, that they, they're not interested. It, it's and, actually someone who's very well known at WMNF. It's Sid Flannery, who is a, had worked for the Southwest Florida Water Management District his, his entire career, and it knows more about the Hillsborough River than anybody. And, and he has actually drafted an amendment to the Senate Bill 64 that would allow for site-specific environmental uh, alternatives to be used on a case-by-case -case basis uh, to not make it so rigid so that you have to do one thing. And uh, we've asked the city if they would help us in promoting that amendment. Again, crickets. They, and they, they don't seem interested. The mayor came to my neighborhood a few weeks ago and talked to my neighborhood. And uh, I asked her, would it, it to take another approach? Could you just get the DEP to make the 2032 deadline TBD, to be determined, until such time as the safety standards are issued by the EPA and the DEP. And she, her response to that was, I totally disagree, Phil. Um, and we need to push on with this right now because we don't want to wind up like those folks with Lake Mead. Uh, she needs a geography lesson. I want to remind people that you're listening to WMNF Tampa 88.5 FM. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. My guests today are talking about Tampa's pure project, Purify Natural Resources for the Environment. We just heard from Phil Compton, founding member of Friends of the Hillsborough River, and Gary Gibbons, vice chair of Tampa Bay Sierra Club, and Carol Camisa with the Hillsborough League of Women Voters. The city's website says the water would be purified to exceed federal and state drinking water standards. So I wanna know what, what that means. Are they talking about the purity of the water that comes out of the wastewater treatment plant or are they speculating about the purity once it gets pumped into and then back out of the drinking water aquifer? I, I'm sorry, I had to laugh because again, there are no standards. There are no federal and state standards. They meet those standards today. Some people won't drink Tampa tap water because they're afraid it's not safe. It is, and the data is here, the science is here to prove that and document that, and you can find that in the city's water report. But going forward with this whole new range of hundreds of new contaminants, forever chemicals, PFAS, um, heavy metals, everything that comes out of a hospital, there are no standards. To say that just is whistling in the dark. Here. Yes. In, in, in terms of um, contaminants, um, you know, our, our current and, and Phil mentioned, you know, but that you get with your water bill, our, our current uh, situation with water. What we're talking about is uh, contaminants that, that we all know. Now, the two largest contaminants uh, in Florida water come from agriculture and from pharmaceuticals. Um, but what's coming through the river right now is different than what we're, be, we're talking about with the PURE project. Right. So we're talking about, as Gary pointed out, a shared sewage system, everything that, that comes from people's toilet system, which includes the full gamut of things from Walgreen drugs and so on, uh, and a lot of new drugs actually that we don't have experience with, as well as industrial waste, uh, you know, lead smelter, uh, gypsum stacks and, and so on. And so that's a whole new ball game and there's uh, new research on PFAS uh, that's alarming. Uh, there's indications of the harm caused by hormones in the water to fish, uh, little boy fish turning into girl fish and so on. Uh, imagine that would, what, what that would do for fisheries. Um, and, and then uh, drugs. I mean, there were, there were fish found off the coast of Miami where the water is much more deeply filtered and so on. Uh, that had alarming levels of antidepressants in them. Uh, so these things are very alarming. And as Phil said, the standards have not been set. In that case, that was 400 times 
the level that you would prescribe someone uh, to take an antidepressant. So the fish were high and the fish lost their fear of predators. So uh, the behavior was uh, a little reckless and dangerous to the fish. Hello, Mr. Barracuda, what's up? Uh, it's, it's not something we wanna see here because the purpose of the minimum flow is to enhance the conditions for spawning for the life of Tampa Bay. We don't wanna crash our fishery population with this so below the dam. And we don't wanna see taking the, you know, a chance on what that might do to future generations who drink this water all day, every day for all of their lives. Let's find out what happens when we have children exposed to this water their entire lives. I don't think that's something a risk we should take. You know, after we had met with the city for more than a year and not gotten answers to our questions, we decided to put them in writing. And we created a list of 17 questions that we felt should be answered for the public before they do anything else with Pure. And the first question is water after it's been treated now. What are the levels of chemicals, metals, PFAS, PFOA, hormones, pathogens, and nutrients that are presently contained in and remain in the wastewater after it's been treated at the wastewater treatment plant and presently discharged into Tampa Bay? They won't answer that question. The second question is, what, how are you gonna treat it and what's gonna be left after you treat it? They won't answer that question. And then what's it gonna cost? And they won't answer that question. It, until they, they don't need to study anything until they answer these questions. There are people in the city government with whom I've had conversations about a wide range of topics over the last 20 years, not just 20 months. And they wanna always come back to this and say, this is what we need to do, regardless of whatever you wanna talk about today, Phil. And I've always asked those three questions and there have not been question, answers to those questions in 20 months or in 20 years, because I guess there aren't answers. But what the city does say is the water coming out of the treatment plant today is cleaner than the water in the river. Now, if you took a glass of river water, it's gonna be kind of brown and have there'll be stuff floating in it. Yeah, the city does a great job with that kind of contamination and treating it. But the water coming out of the current wastewater treatment plant, it may be clear, it may be fresh, but what you can't see are the contaminants that are present there. My guest this morning opposed Tampa's idea that's branded PURE, Purify Natural Resources for the Environment. You're listening to WMNF Tampa. This is Tuesday Cafe. Joining us by Zoom, we just heard Phil Compton, who is a founding member of the Friends of the Hillsborough River. We heard Gary Gibbons, vice chair of Tampa Bay Sierra Club, Carol Camisa with the Hillsborough League of Women Voters. And Phil, just a minute ago, you mentioned some terms, and I want to make sure that people understand what we're talking about. You talked about the minimum flow in the lower Hillsboro below the dam. So the dam is that dam in Rollett Park, right, uh, right above like Sulphur Springs, Seminole Heights area. And, and that's the drinking water reservoir for where the, where the city of Tampa gets most of its water it comes essentially from that reservoir. It's above the dam. And then low, the lower river is below that dam. So from there all the way out to downtown Tampa and minimum flow means that it's for the ecosystem to be healthy. You want a minimum amount of water, fresh water flowing through that river. So these are all concepts that we're going to be talking about in the next few minutes. Uh, is there anything that you want to add about why any of that's important? Well, it is absolutely because uh, Friends of the River was founded in 1999 to advocate. And then we had to go to court with the city to get them to give the river really fresh water. It's a tidal estuary. It's the most fertile place on earth. If you don't mess it up and for 35 years until from the seventies until uh, the last decade, they did mess it up and the fish and wildlife suffered greatly. We got them to restore it with not just sulfur springs water, but a minimal amount of fresh water. It doesn't take much water, but just a little bit of water every day. What we have learned recently is that there is actually a lot more fresh water that the city has available for this purpose. They have overpumped sulfur springs. They have created the salinity, high salinity conditions there. So it's twice as salty as it used to be. So we do need a little more fresh water. And guess what? They've already got it. They could use it if they wanted to. And they have committed to using that now going forward. So I give credit to the water department for owning up to their mistakes in the recent past. 
Well, let's hear from the city about why they think that their idea, the pure idea, is the best way to protect Sulphur Springs. So here's another video that's on the city's website. Fresh water, one of the rarest resources on the planet. A resource so precious, it makes up less than 3% of the Earth's water. Most is beyond reach, locked away in glaciers and mountaintops. But not all. Florida has one of the largest concentrations of freshwater springs in the world. These springs make Florida living special and are places to witness the beauty of nature. But it's a resource that needs our protection now more than ever, including our very own sulfur springs. During the dry season, the city of Tampa pumps fresh water from Sulphur Springs to the base of the Hillsboro River Dam. This steady flow of fresh water ensures a healthy habitat for fish and wildlife below the dam. Over time, pumping Sulphur Springs has taken a toll. Each year, the water gets saltier. This natural resource and warm water refuge for Florida's manatees is now at risk. This is a problem we must fix and soon. The PURE project can help us restore Sulphur Springs by giving Tampa a new, sustainable, and reliable source of fresh water. Florida was blessed with an abundance of freshwater springs, and now it's our responsibility to protect this valuable natural resource. Learn more at tampa.gov PURE. So I have a feeling that for the first 45 seconds or so of that, everyone's in agreement that that none of you would disagree with anything that the city is saying about the need for fresh water in the lower Hillsborough River. But what I'm taking from this conversation is that the very last part, that the solution by the city that that pure is the answer is what you how you differ. So who would like to uh, to talk about whether that's that's an accurate portrayal? Well, if I may, we've been engaged Friends of the River for 23 years fighting with the city, pushing back against the city. The city has only wanted to use Sulphur Springs water from the very beginning under the time of Dick Greco and never wanted to give up any fresh water. Tampa Bay water gives the city a lot of fresh water from the Tampa Bypass Canal, which is spring fed, cuts into the aquifer, and the city only lets three quarters of that water go over the dam. Okay, so they have a lot more water and, and we've done the numbers and they have plenty of fresh water. And again, as I just said, the city did say, make a commitment recently that they would give the river the fresh water that they agreed to 15 years ago, but have somehow forgotten that they made that agreement. So we reminded them of that scientist and the Tampa River Board, all the different agencies that have anything to do with the river reminded the water department. And they said, okay, we're going to do that. They have created this situation by over pumping sulfur springs and if they give the river a little more of the fresh water that they have today during the dry season, things will return to a more normal state at Sulphur Springs without having to pump that treated wastewater into the Sulphur Springs area, into our aquifer. What they want to do, though, is replace Sulphur Springs water and the clean fresh water that's going down the river for the tidal nursery with this partially contaminated, risky water. So while we don't want to see it in our drinking water, we also don't want to see environmental havoc, correct? When fish are exposed to hormones and antidepressants and God knows what, hundreds and hundreds of contaminants that you and I don't want to drink and we don't want the fish swimming around in it as well. And the lowest cost estimate for doing pure is 3.4 billion. And, and that's, that's just from an early um, alternatives analysis that was uh, conducted by uh, Jeterna, a, a consultant hired by the city. It doesn't take into effect uh, what the cost would be if they employed uh, RO, re reverse osmosis, as part of the treatment. And it doesn't factor in the cost of maintenance over 30 years either. And so why should the cit citizens of Tampa have their bills raised uh, 50 to $75 a month to pay for this when the city could has the water available from the Tampa Bypass Canal. As, as Phil said, when the Corps of Engineers dug the, the canal, they dug it too deep and they actually tapped into a spring in the aquifer. So it is spring fed. It's, gonna, it, it's available, it's fresh. We know it, it's coming from underground. It, we'd much have, rather have that coming down the river than, than pure. So that spring in the canal, um, I'm, I wasn't familiar with that. So that water that's from the spring is just going now straight into Tampa Bay along with the Tampa Bay Bypass Canal. Is that right? 
Well, the Tampa Bypass Canal is now a source of water to augment the supply of Tampa Bay water and the city of Tampa. For the city's part, it flows into the river by the Harney Canal. Uh, and so it becomes part of the reservoir. And they got an extra allocation from Swift Mud of that water for the purpose of meeting the minimum flow to combine really truly fresh water with the springs water, which isn't exactly fresh. It's uh, a little salty. And as we know now, it's gotten saltier because they've overutilized that. They've abused that resource because they don't want to use any of the fresh water that they were given for that purpose 15 years ago. The bypass canal was originally constructed to prevent flooding. We had some severe flooding back in the 60s and, and 70s. And, and that was created so that we wouldn't have flooding up in the north part of the city. Um, but, uh, it, you know, as a result of, of a, a mistake in construction of that, it, it's, it's become another source of fresh water that, that is much better than Sulphur Springs. Sid Flannery, again, has the data to show that and has showed this to the city that if they simply stop water from Sulphur Springs, the salinity levels will will actually lower and, and, and it'll return to, to a better state than it is now. The other concern we have with Pure is that they want to put uh, millions of gallons daily into the aquifer underneath the central part of Tampa, uh, supposedly to, to create a freshwater bubble around Sulphur Springs. Uh, we have concerns that there are people with potable wells in, in, Sulphur, in uh, Seminole Heights and Tampa Heights that drink from those wells. They're, they're not hooked up to city water. And, and what's, the, what's gonna happen with uh, you know, upconing of that water? And, and where's it gonna come out in the springs and other places around town uh, that are, are a real concern? A year a ago, concern. a year ago, the uh, director of the water department told all Seminole Heights Neighborhood Association meeting, trust us, we would never do anything to hurt you when a resident said, Will this affect the well water that I drink in my yard? And that's why yesterday, Old Seminole Heights Neighborhood Association and two dozen other neighborhood associations stood with us to say no to Pure. And we want to ask people, if you think this is uh, an unwise, rash, risky move by the city, not to mention expensive, write council today, send them a note, Tampa City Council at Tampa Gov dot net tampa city council at tampa gov dot net they're meeting this thursday morning they near, need to hear from you today they know if they vote against the mayor they're sticking their necks out and they need to know that the people are behind them in saying no to this risky project and it would be useful for the mayor to hear from people that are concerned as well i think you know what we in general have talked about here is a, a real complexity of issues uh, there are many issues related to our water. There's resiliency, there's salinity, there's contaminants, there's a lot of, of things here, but there's been a lot of studies funded uh, and there's a lack of transparency. And at this point, uh, we are not convinced of the need for this project. In fact, we feel like it's terribly expensive and terribly dangerous. And I think the finer point of it is, is the, the risk is irreparable. If you do deep water injection and you pump something in there and a mistake is made or the standards have not been set or something, you can't get it out. Uh, you know, <laughs> there are things and commitments being made with a lot of money through this project that are unwise at best. And so uh, your listeners who are concerned do need to register their concerns with the mayor and the city council. And if you can, if your schedule allows you, come down to City Council Thursday morning for the nine o'clock meeting when Council is going to vote on the future of Pure. Our guests, we just heard Phil Compton, founding member of Friends of the Hillsborough River, Carol Camiso with the Hillsborough League of Women Voters, and Gary Gibbons, vice chair of Tampa Bay Sierra Club. They're all op opposed now to Tampa's idea of Pure, purify natural resources for the environment, a recycling of treated wastewater, you're listening to WMNF Tampa, 88.5 FM, and I'm Sean Canan. This is the Tuesday Cafe. Let me read an email that came in. Uh, Bernie writes, don't forget about all of the water being pumped out of Pasco. All of our lakes are about dried up, even with all this rain. So, you know, there may be, um, there may be concerns about fresh water, but uh, part of it is just overuse. 
And that's why Tampa Bay Water was created. And that's why Tampa Bay Water created the desalinization plant to relieve the lakes, the area of Pasco County that was being over pumped. And so we have a regional solution to these problems. Yeah, we've suggested that they pipe the, the reclaimed water down to Tampa Bay Water and let them uh, purify it in their RO plant. They already have one that they only use part of the year. But the, if, if they would use that more, uh, it would be cheaper than building this project. And uh, it would uh, reduce the drawdown of those well fields up in Pasco County. And we have and a somehow, question. Sorry, sorry, Phil, can I interrupt yes, just please, to please. briefly mention, Gary said RO. And so that what that stands for is reverse osmosis. Yes. And there's that plant down south of Tampa. And on that note, and maybe Phil, you can uh, follow up with what you were about to say in response to this text message that comes from the 239 area code who asks, doesn't reverse osmosis waste a lot of fresh water or is that only a concern in residential applications? It separates your water into two streams, reject water and product water, as you would call it. So you'd have the water with the contaminants going uh, elsewhere. And elsewhere is something that would need to be determined. But the water that is considered the purified, the product water, is purely H2O, nothing else in it. And this, and as Gary said, Tampa Bay Water already has one. Why should Tampa spend our tax dollars to build something and duplicate that system just so we can say that we have our own system outside of Tampa Bay Water, which we're part of? You know, all of you have mentioned Thursday's meeting. So what can people expect? What's being voted on this Thursday at Tampa City Council? And where can people go for more information? Um, they can go to the uh, Tampa Gov website and, and look under City Council. Um, you can see the schedule of meetings. It starts at nine o'clock and there's uh, a number of items of business. Um, they can uh, register to, to uh, make a comment uh, virtually or show up in person um, and be part of the discussion, register their, their opinions and so on. And outside of that, they can find on that website uh, email addresses for the mayor and the city council. So prior to that meeting, they can let them know uh, what, what their opinions are. Now, as to what will be discussed regarding Pure, we're a little bit uncertain because our friends with the water department have never been entirely uh, clear or accurate in their communications <laughs> yeah, with us. I'm trying to be charitable here. And uh, we've heard that they will now request a continuance. In other words, that in February, they will come back to city council asking for more money. What we would like is them to account for the initial $1.1 million that they received in January. We still don't know what the status of that is. And we've heard they've used up all the money and we've heard that they still have money. So we would be very helpful to know, uh, but we think that that's what we, they might do. The other concern that we have and this uh, is beyond pure, but there's a tendency down at City Hall to have public discussions and get public comment. And then in the afternoon, there are private discussions that go on. So that's a little bit of a concern. But you well, can email all council members at Tampa City Council at tampagov.net. Well, thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe today, Phil, Carol, and Gary. Thank, thank you, Sean. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks Gary, for the time. Thanks, Gary. Well, listeners. Gary Gibbons is vice chair of the Tampa Bay Sierra Club. Carol Camisa is with Hillsborough League of Women Voters, and Phil Compton is a founding member of Friends of Hillsborough River. If you missed any of this show, you can watch it again beginning this afternoon on WMNF.org. I want to thank John, John Dunn for help engineering the show today. You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. And if you like the programming on 88.5 FM, please consider making a donation at WMNF.org. In this time slot tomorrow, Shelly will host Midpoint. And coming up next is Wavemakers with Janet and Tom Sherberger. September is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. We'll hear their interview with ovarian cancer survivors, Carrie Kreisman and Carla Jimenez. That's coming up after NPR News headlines. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, and Lakeland. Thanks so much for listening to 88.5 FM.